Ozarks First. You're watching Color 10 News at 5. An Arizona County assessor is charged with human smuggling and an adoption fraud scheme with ties to Arkansas. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer Abreu. Good to have you along here at 5 tonight. I'm David Oliver. Maricopa County, Arizona assessor Paul Peterson is now charged with human smuggling, sale of a child, and communications fraud in Utah, as well as conspiracy theft and forgery in Arizona. And he's facing federal charges in Arkansas, too. Mr. Peterson used his law license and his legal expertise to prey not only upon the women of the Marshall Islands, but on many innocent families here in Arkansas that wanted nothing more but to add to their family. So let's go over the details. According to court documents, the adoption fraud scheme brought dozens of pregnant women from the Marshall Islands to the U.S. to give up their children for adoption. Peterson would pay for the women to travel to the U.S. and to live in a home that he owned until delivering the baby, according to the records. Authorities say the babies were then adopted by U.S. parents who paid about $40,000. The women would then be flown back to the Marshall Islands or to another U.S. state, most commonly Arkansas. This is a multi-state investigation led by the Arizona Attorney General's Office. Now, Arkansas is the only state to file those federal charges. Prosecutors are still investigating tonight whether they can charge Peterson or anyone else who may be involved at the state level. Peterson is expected in court in Arkansas coming up on October 29th. A power outage on Springfield's northwest side caused some traffic problems today. It started early this morning after a vehicle hit a pole at the intersection of Kansas Expressway and Atlantic. According to city utilities, as crews were making repairs, some equipment malfunctioned, causing an outage that affected 1,500 customers. It also knocked out power to the traffic lights at that same intersection of Kansas Expressway and Atlantic. Later, a second crash happened. No serious injuries were reported. However, it caused a number of traffic delays in that area. Witnesses rushed to help those involved in the crash. Um, I was parked right here going northbound on Kansas Expressway and all the lights were out. So as I stopped, I was actually calling the police to have an officer come down here and kind of direct traffic. And in the midst of it, this white car came across and another black car came across the other direction just smacked each other. So. Springfield police say if traffic lights are not working, always treat it as a four-way stop. City Utility says the power was back up and running within a little over an hour. This next story here at 5 is Positively Ozarks tonight. Thanks to the work of some local artists, one part in the uh, park, one park in the Ozarks is now the home of a 200-foot colorful mural. Color 10's Crystal Blair joins us live in Branson tonight where the park is located. Crystal, we understand that uh, there was a specific reason why this mural was painted. Yes, there was, David. The Branson Parks and Recreation Department teamed up with the Missouri, the Southern Missouri Arts Connection, also known as SMAC. And they did this to paint a very large mural on the wall of Murphy Park. The reason being they were hoping to discourage graffiti vandals. The wall kept getting graffitied over and over and over again, and they wanted to um, make it pretty enough that they wouldn't want to paint over it. Local artist Lacey Fincham is part of the seven group of artists that were contacted by SMAC to put her art skills to work and help beautify Murphy Park on Nyhart Avenue in Branson and hopefully keep the vandals away. Now the wall was divided into sections where each artist painted with various positive themes such as nature and love. The project took three days and wrapped up this past weekend. Fincham says they received very positive feedback from the community. One of the kids that was playing here got to help for a little while the other day. Uh, one of the uh, local neighbors brought us dinner one night. It got much more attention than even I anticipated because my um, landlord actually emailed me and said, are you the Ariel Smith who worked on the mural? <laughs> Now, uh, there are other parks in the area that are on the list for a facelift. One of them is Stocksteel, and another one is John, Nig John Nigar Memorial. Reporting live in Branson, Crystal Blair, Ozarks First. All right, Crystal, thanks. In education coverage tonight, cybersecurity experts expect 3.5 million jobs to go unfilled in their industry by 2021. Color 10's Nigel McDonald explains current efforts to expose students to a future career in cybersecurity. 
In this room behind me are a group of high school students from across the state of Missouri here to compete in a cybersecurity challenge. The challenge teaches students how to penetrate a network from a hacker's viewpoint. A skill experts say will prepare them for the challenges they will face on the job. This is round two of the two-part competition. In round one, teams of three students work together to solve real-world problems, such as brute force password attacks. Round two consists of the top ten teams completing virtual challenges in a capture the flag style setting. One of the ten teams includes students from Kickapoo High School who say they are excited to be here. I really enjoy programming, so this is one of my favorite things to do is to go out and do a competition that has to do with computers or cybersecurity. The problem solving and the feeling you get when you successfully solve a problem. It's it's like a high almost. It's awesome. Representatives from several of the state's colleges are also on site here to speak to students about career opportunities in cybersecurity. Reporting in Osage Beach, Nyjah McDonald, Ozarks First. Governor Parson was also there to recognize the challenge's top competitors. We've talked about this before and we're going to talk about it once again. The Community Blood Center of the Ozarks mm -hmm. has a critical need tonight for type O blood. How and when you can help next on Caller 10 News at 5. Stay right here.